I think, Brother Matt's an excellent demonstration of the abundance of the kingdom. Every time this brother stands before us, we are given quite a bit. I'm glad for that. Um, one of the things he said right from the opening is, in salvation, Christ is the provision. He is the provision. Not just that he provides, but he himself is the provision. Okay? So, if we are in need of guidance, then... He's the shepherd. And if we're in need of being fruitful, then he's the vine. And if we're in need of sustenance of life, then he's the bread of life. And if we are in need of deliverance from deception, then he is the light. That's what he is. He's the light. If we're in need of wisdom, then all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in him. They're in him. They're in him. Okay. And if we're in need of knowledge, then he's the truth. And if we are in need of coming to God, then he's the way. He's the way. And if our need is to be delivered from sin, then he is both the Lamb of God and the Savior of the world. It's both of those things. If we are in need of justification, then he's the Lamb of God. See, at every, at every point you have a need, and of course your need is defined by what the objective of God in salvation is. It's not a subjective definition that we provide for ourselves. It's... It's the, our need according to what God is doing. Then Jesus is that provision. He is this. And I, I rejoice in that. I am reminded of something Peter said. He said that he gives us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him, mm -hmm. of Christ. Not academic knowledge. It's not just that we don't have enough facts. It's, it's personal affinity with Christ, being one with him. And so the exhortation in this regard seems pretty obvious. Abide in me. Amen. Abide in me. Okay? And I'll tell you, that, that's a pretty big work to abide in Christ. When you consider how many things are against you, how many things are trying to draw you away from Christ. We talked about distractions this morning. The world itself is contrary. Sets itself so up, so to speak, against the knowledge of God and of Christ. You have an enemy in your own members, which gives no respect to Jesus, doesn't bow the knee. The flesh doesn't bow the knee to Jesus, never. And so we have a great many things that we have to overcome. But this is part of the good fight of faith. This is part of the good fight of faith, is abiding in him. And, I, and Jesus, Jesus will never, ever disappoint. You will never come to Christ where you will not be made more productive, more fruitful, given more strength. See, he's... The ultimate benefit that God has given us is his son. Mm -hmm. He that spared on his own son, how shall I not with him freely give us all things? God has already given you the best that he has to give in his son. And so I encourage you to make, make good use of that knowledge, brother, and abide. Abide in him. Now, uh, another thing that, that uh, let's confirm that we are abiding in him. We don't want to be theoretical about whether we are or not. And so I like this. Brother Matt said, those who are truly in Christ ought to act like it. And we ought to put that kind of pressure on men. You know, God's gone on record about what the people of God would be as a result of salvation. God's gone on record. We just said earlier that he's exalted his word above his name, and God has gone on a record about the impact that this salvation would have on men who trusted in Jesus. Okay, let me give you a few of these. For example... He talks about doing a new thing and making these great investments. It'd be something quite different from what he did with the law. It'd be a salvation that's by grace through faith. And so he says, this people have a form for myself. They shall show forth my praise. See, and so two things there. One is they are made for the Lord. That's one. And so you got to ask yourself, is that like the center of, of how you live? You live to please the Lord. There are a lot of so to speak profession believers that aren't that's not primary to them, is living to please the Lord. And yet this text says, this people have I formed for me. It's for me, see? In salvation, primarily, is primarily about God getting what he wants. And so you, kind of, you have to ask yourself, is, is God pleased with me? Because that's why he formed you. It's for himself. And they shall show forth my praise and so you really got to here's where you got to examine yourself to see if you be in the faith is to determine how praiseworthy your conversation is 
Because this whole notion out there that I'm going to live a fumbling, bumbling life all through this world, and I'm still going to go to glory is a, fo- is a, is a foolish distortion of mercy. Amen. This is not the truth. Not if salvation's effective. If salvation's ineffective, then okay. Then it would seem to me that God would be required, in a sense, to be gracious to people because he didn't come through. But he has come through. Amen. So why aren't men coming through? Or let me say it another way, why are certain men coming through? If we have one person in Christ that demonstrates faithfulness and an honorable conversation, then they all can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Isn't that right? Yes, yes. And we've got more than one. Mm-hmm. This people have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. Let me give another one. How about this one? I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. It's gone on record. Are you giving much fruit or are you giving little fruit? And I'm not saying either way. I, I've got my own persuasions about the brethren. I think God's receiving a lot of fruit out of this assembly. But you've got to be sober about this because this is what Jesus said. He didn't say they might. He said they would. How about this one? He says, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. With the affections and lusts. This isn't a theoretical deliverance from sin where we keep sinning, but we're glad that we can quit, you know, every once in a while. We kind of quit for a while, and so we're we're thankful for being able to do that. The affections and lusts are crucified. If you're Christ's. See? So if you're being dominated by sinful affections, something's wrong there. Because they that are Christ's, have crucified. I'll tell you right now, those two men on the cross couldn't do a thing while they were being crucified. All they could do is talk. Right? Which means if someone in Christ goes into sin, they've done it willfully. And Christ didn't produce that. See, God's gone on record here. That's what I'm showing you. Just examine yourselves and see if you be in the faith. I'm certain that the brethren here will find good things to find, good examinations. Yes, I have. I, I am. I'm saying no. I'm saying no. And, of course, this one in 1 John 5, this text I love, 1 John 5, 4 and 5, no theorizing in this whatsoever. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, just so you know, the new creation isn't independent. The new creation requires continuing resources from the one from whom the creation came. Salvation doesn't make you independent, although it does make you sufficient. Amen. Okay? It makes you sufficient, but your sufficiency is not of yourself. And so he goes on to say, who is he that overcomes the world? Hmm? I mean, do you, do you overcome the world by some kind of a routine? Is that how you do it? You do it in, with something independent from your association with Christ? It is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. But here again, God's going on record here. People that do this overcome the world. You cannot believe that Jesus is the Son of God and be overcome by the world at the same time. That can't happen. Okay, so all these, all these, these testimonies that God has given of what the people of God would be as a result of the work of salvation is like places where you examine yourself. And brethren, certain we've come far enough to realize that we're going we're gonna to find good things when we make that examination. And if you don't, then it's time to bring that confession, confess that to the Lord immediately, okay? Because this is what they'll be. So I encourage you with these two things, abide in Him, and then make sober examination according to what God has said the people would be, not what the present day preacher says what the people would be. Make that examination and then look at your conversation. And I think, brethren, if you're walking by faith, you'll find an agreement between those two things. Amen. So now I open up, brethren, for, for your comments this morning on this message.